Hi and welcome. In this video, I want to show you how you can install the PayPal extension and which possibilities this extension offers. So let's start with the installation of PayPal. You can either set up PayPal within the first run wizard. This is this point, so the point after mailer configuration. Or you can install the extensions under extensions, my extensions. Um, it's important that you have previously logged into your shopware account beforehand. So um, after that, you can just click on activate PayPal for shopware six. So let's come to the general configuration. After you have activated the extension, you can configure PayPal in the admin under settings extensions, and then PayPal. Let's start at the top. So sales channels. Um, in this drop down menu, you can select for which of your sales channels the settings should be made. Uh, you can choose between all sales channels or yeah, um, an individual sales channel, which you have created um, with the button set PayPal as default. You can activate PayPal in the selected um, yeah, sales channel and set it as the default payment method. Before I come to the setting point API credentials, um, I've got a side note for PayPal checkout. Um, PayPal checkout is the all in one solution that allows you to offer powerful and flexible payment processing features. Um, with PayPal checkout, uh, you can submit your customers' payments by invoice, credit card, direct debit, and many other local payment methods in addition to the classic PayPal. So PayPal Checkout replaces PayPal Plus. Um, but for this, an onboarding is required for some payment methods such as purchase on account. So you start the initial setup or onboarding by clicking the Start Onboarding button. Then log into your PayPal site where your account and follow the instructions. So the onboarding button and the PayPal connect PayPal account button, uh, you will find this in the payment methods. So to really start the onboarding, just click on connect PayPal account. Um, with this button, you can start the onboarding and the initial setup of the integration using the PayPal website. Um, so the PayPal API credentials will be configured automatically then. You can also use the sandbox credentials or your sandbox credentials. Um, this option, option can be enabled if you want to test the PayPal integration. So in this case, no real payments are or will be made. Here we have our payment methods and yeah, the payment method name. So PayPal checkout provides many different payment types as you can see. Um, and then we have the payment method status. Uh, the payment method status indicates whether the payment method can be currently used in your store or not. Um, the status onboarding needed and authorized are possible at this point here. Um, yeah, and then active or activate and deactivate payment method. Uh, you can use this button at the back yeah, to activate or deactivate the respective payment method. So now let's go back to our extension settings, and then we will come to the API credentials module. Um, because as an alternative to the onboarding, you can also enter your PayPal API credentials directly if available. Um, so we start with the client ID, this is the top field. Uh, with the client ID, yeah, you enter the PayPal REST ID. This is used to be, uh, or used by the extensions to authenticate with the PayPal API. Then we've got the client secret. The client secret, um, yeah, here you enter your or the REST API client secret, which the extension also uses to authenticate itself with the PayPal API. Here we have the PayPal merchant ID. 
Uh, this is where you enter your PayPal merchant ID to authenticate the new PayPal checkout features. Then we've got the button test API credentials with this button or with the help of this button, you can test the credentials you entered. So the result of the test will be displayed directly on the button itself. So you, most of the time you will get a check mark over or as a layout of this button here. Then we come to the sandbox entries. So here we've got the possibility of, we also got the possibility to enable our sandbox. Um, obviously here we enter our sandbox client ID, um, the sandbox client secret and our sandbox PayPal merchant ID. All these IDs um, are also used uh, by the extension to authenticate itself with the PayPal API. Um, at the bottom here, you also are able to test the Sandbox API credentials. So this works just as good as the test API credentials. So if the credentials are correct, you will get a check mark down here. Now we come to the behavior module. On the behavior, you can make basic settings for the extension uh, that are not only valid for the classic PayPal, but also for the express checkout. So we start with the merchant location. Um, here, yeah, obviously you can enter your merchant location. So in our case, I will just take Germany. Then we have our payment acquisition um, with, yeah, this is where you define when the PayPal is collected, for example, when it is closed. So you can choose between automatic payment collection or manual payment collection. Then we've got the checkbox um, submit cart. Submit cart, uh, yeah, here you can choose whether the customer's shopping cart, for example, um, the exact positions of the order are allowed to be transferred to PayPal. If this option is deactivated, only the total amount is transferred. Here we have the field for your own brand name on PayPal page. Um, here you can yeah, set your own brand name for the advertisement on the PayPal page. Then we've got the PayPal landing page. Um, here you can choose whether the PayPal landing page should display the registration form or the login screen. So we've, yeah, we can choose between login, reg registration or no preference. So no preference means that PayPal decides which page is shown depending on the previous interaction of the customer with PayPal. Then we've got the checkbox for submit order number. Um, activate this option if you want to send the order number to PayPal after completion. Uh, then we've got fields for the order number prefix or the order number suffix. Um, yeah, here you can determine which text is appended to the original order number. For example, you've got your order numbers like my shop SW. 200. This option is only available if you have activated the previous option, submit order number to PayPal. Um, and with the order number suffix, uh, yeah, you can determine which one is attached to the order number. For example, my shop SW2000, I'll just type them in. So this is the order number prefix and he just enter the suffix, um, which then is attached to the order number, for example, um, KK. So then we've got the excluded products with the excluded products. Obviously you can, yeah, exclude products. 
and then we can exclude dynamic product groups as well. So if you have dynamic product groups, you could exclude them with this drop down menu. At the bottom of our PayPal settings, we've got two modules left. First one is the credit or debit card module where you can check the yeah, check mark for execute transactions with 3D secure only. Uh, this means um, if you or transactions will not be accepted if the 3D secure is unavailable. And at the bottom, last but not least, we've got the pay up on invoice. Uh, with the pay up on invoice, your customers can place the order as a purchase on account. Um, so PayPal settles the invoice amount to you as the store operator and the customer must settle the invoice as a transfer to PayPal or rate pay. So in this configuration field, um, yeah, you can, or this field can be used to implement additional information in customer emails for the payment method purchase on account. For example, notes on payment. Next, we come to the tab store font presentation. So here again, you can choose uh, between your sales channels. You can yeah select either all sales channels or one of your individual sales channels. Um, you can directly see that some parts are inherited. So I'll just check all sales channels to set the things uh, in general. Because we are in the storefront presentation tab here, this is all about points that have to do with the presentation of the extension in your storefront, such as, for example, the express checkout shortcut. So here you can see that the PayPal checkout button is displayed on detail page, on cart, on off canvas cart, on login page by default. You can also select the PayPal checkout button on the listing page, or obviously you can deselect these buttons here, but by default, the first four are selected. Um, then we've got the button color. Uh, you can choose between blue, black, gold, silver, and white, but the gold one is the recommended one. Um, after that, you can select a button shape. We've got round and rectangular. Uh, rectangular is the one which is pre-selected. And then at the bottom, we've got the button local. Um, so this is the button language. And in this field, you can enter different shop languages for the express checkout button. So if the field is empty, the sales channel language will be used. Um, note, it's important that you enter the so-called local code here, such as ENGB, um, for example, for English. Um, yeah, but a list of available language codes can be found on the PayPal site, and here is the link for it. And then at the yeah bottom, we've got uh, the checkbox for display pay later button next to the PayPal checkout button. So um, if you hover over the question mark, um, the explanation for this is that the pay later button will be displayed on the same page and in the same design as the PayPal checkout button. Then we've got the pay later banner. So these are all the uh, configuration check boxes for the pay later banner. Um, by default, all of them are selected. So the pay later banner is on the detail page, on cart, on the, or the off canvas cart, on the login page and on the footer. And last but not least, we've got the smart payment buttons module. So for this, it's important to know that if you have selected other merchant location on the behavior for the merchant location, the smart payment button uh, will be displayed in the checkout in your storefront. So for the configuration of these smart payment buttons, uh, a new configuration option will be displayed as soon as you have changed the merchant location. But let's go through the config, uh, configuration here. So starting with the checkbox for or to enable smart payment buttons, and then you've got two more checkboxes 
uh, one to enable the alternative payment methods for the smart payment buttons um, and the one for yeah to display pay later button next to paypal button um, so if the button is also a paypal pay later button um, it's inserted which leads the customer directly to the paypal option to pay the amount after 30 days um, then yeah just as here we've got uh, the option to choose the button color the button shape and again the button language so now at the end of this video i would like to show you how the paypal settings are played or displayed um, in the storefront um, obviously, in the meantime, uh, I have carried out the onboarding and activated my sandbox. Um, note that only then it is possible to use PayPal in your shop. Um, I left all settings at default, so you can now see that the PayPal checkout and the pay later things or buttons are displayed in the off canvas cart. If I go to uh, listing page you can also see the PayPal uh, buttons below the add to shopping cart button if you go into a product um, to a detailed page you can see the PayPal checkout buttons here as well so if you go to the cart um, this is the point where you can also select the PayPal checkout buttons